there. <laughs> yeah, we can we can hear you. This is Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi. It's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Katie and Michelle. This is Brenda. How are you? Hi, Brenda. Long time no hear from. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm going to wait for a couple of more minutes, so you're not going to hear me for a while, surprisingly. Um, uh, because we're supposed, we're expecting three more people at least to show up. So okay, am I hang to on. Up on my screen? Uh, not yet. Here, let me. All better now. Yeah. N now I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Now all I see is a black screen. It's awesome. There we go. There we go. Um, all right. So I'm going to um, hold on until I get three more people or at least uh, somebody from uh, MSU on, and then we'll go ahead and start the meeting. Okay, great. Hi guys, we're going to go ahead and start. It's uh, 10.03. I'm sure somebody else will come on in. I was really hoping uh, MSU would actually be here, um, as well as Claudia Romero from Front Range. Um, um, I think uh, one of them teaches until 10 o'clock, and so they might be running to the phone. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, our basic background. This is the um, CCS Digital Badge uh, meeting for engineering graphics, 3D printing, and additive manufacturing. Um, this group isn't going to be as easy as the NIMS group um, because of the fact that, um, and I am not a subject matter expert, so Michelle, since you are the only one that is, um, oh, Pam is coming in. Um, I'm here. Yay! I don't know about that, but okay! <laughs> um, since I'm not a subject matter expert, at this point in time, is there national certifications for 3D printing, engineering graphics, and uh, additive manufacturing? I am not aware of one. Are you, Pam? Not, no, I'm not. Um, the only thing I can think of, and it's, and I have to ask somebody, there's a huge national conference um, in, uh, every year that people with those skill sets, they attend, and I sent a bunch of people to that. 
There might be an opportunity, maybe a professional organization, but I, I don't I don't really know. Well, we know, know that software. Yours, but <laughs> right, and we know that software actually you can get certifications in software like SolidWorks, um, Rivet, Architecture, all those kind of things, but that's not necessarily um, a certification in 3D printing or whatever. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do our, our round robin introductions again. Um, just so that we all know who's here, there's um, there's callers on the phone, and I assume that's Pam and Rita. Um, so we're going to go ahead and with caller user number two. Could you introduce yourself, please? Well, this is Claudia Romero. I just joined the meeting, and I haven't gotten on WebEx yet, so it's possible I'm number two. I'm not sure. You Hi, are. Claudia. <laughs> Awesome. I'm glad you were able to make it. Yeah, I'm sorry it was late. I just got out of class. No worries. No worries. Um, this is awesome. So, Claudia, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Claudia Romero. I am Program Director and Faculty at the Larimer Campus for uh, Front Range Community College in Fort Collins, and I am Computer Aided Drafting and Design and Engineering Graphics. Awesome. Thank you. Anything else you wanted to know? No, that's it. That's perfect. Okay. We're just going here. We're just going around and introducing ourselves. Okay, Caller great. number four. Is that Pam? Maybe not. Uh, maybe. maybe. Yep, it is you. Okay. I'm caller number four. <laughs> oh, Sounds and like oh, I looked it up. It is called. Um, Autodesk University. That was the thing I was thinking of. That might have some application. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much for looking that up. We have a um, Katie. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, I'm Katie Wood Nancy, and I'm an instructional designer, and I'm mostly working on um, kind of the the graphic designs of the badges, but also we'll be helping out with other stuff too. Great, thanks. Michelle and Calvin, did you guys want to go ahead and say hi? It's just me on this one. I'm solo. It's Hi, I'm Michelle Coster with Pike Peak Community College, um, Department Chair of uh, Computer Aided Drafting Program, Machining, and Architecture. Awesome, thanks. <clears throat> and Rita, did you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Um, sure, this is Rita Stoffel. I'm at Red Rock Community College and we're working on the uh, Advanced Manufacturing Pathway Initiative. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Rita. So basically, um, as I was stating before, engineering graphics isn't going to be quite as easy to um, digital badge as they are um, NIMS manufacturing um, machining because there isn't uh, actual competencies that are identified nationwide for this. Um, just as a background, digital badges in higher ed in 2013, all those colleges that were on the screen um, actually started uh, digital badge programs inside their colleges. Um, and that's um, CCCS with CHAMP funding is going to be piloting the technical math in machining, engineering graphics, and faculty development badges. Our digital badge journey started back in May 2015 when Dr. McKellen announced that we were digital badging advanced manufacturing. In August 2015, the college presidents were given a presentation on digital badges with a Q&A following that. Um, September 2015 here, um, I led a work group who convened to write a white paper on the feasibility studies of digital badges within the Colorado CCCS system. And in November 2015, the white paper was then published and sent to all VPIs to let them know how digital badges would be rolled out throughout the system. Um, as a reminder, digital badges are not competing with courses, certificates, or degrees. We have intentionally made the decision not to badge a course, not to badge a certificate, and not to badge a degree because we already do that. That's already our credentials. The so digital badges are micro-credentials at a granular level, and it's actually to capture 
the demonstration of what a person knows and their ability to perform the skill or skill set successfully. Um, right now, we've developed four types of badges, proficient, expert, master, and excellent. Um, and we are hoping, because engineering graphics, additive manufacturing, and 3D printing, um, I am not a subject matter expert, but I assume there's proficiency levels and then some students can actually earn expert badges. Um, because I learned from the machining badges, um, let's take a proficiency badge in basic statistics, specifically graphs, right? So it talks about that you have the color image of the statistic of the badge. Inside the actual metadata, it talks about the title of the badge, the description of the badge, and it actually gives you the criteria. Graphing Mastery Digital Badge is awarded on passing a standardized problem-solving assessment at 80% or higher on the graphing assessment contained in the Technical Math for Industry MOOC hosted on the Canvas network of free courses. So it tells you exactly how the criteria is being met, and it also gives you a description of the actual competencies. Demonstrate the knowledge and use of coordinate plane and graphing linear equations demonstrate the knowledge and ability to find a slope of a line, write an equation, very, very specific competencies. So if an employer looks at this basic statistics graphing badge they, and they have an actual job opening, they can actually match this badge to a job opening if it actually fits. And that's what we're looking for, to be able to make our certificates and degrees and courses a little bit more transparent to, to make that workplace fit much easier. So we would consider this a proficiency badge. We have an expert badge, and it states that it's an essential statistics mastery badge. The badge owner has mastered essential statistics competencies of statistics, mean, median, mode, and graphing. So there's three different knowledge sets that this actual expert badge has. And it actually talks about that the badge owner has ma mastered the exact same thing. But it also goes on, it should go on and say that the, that, that the, Mastery of Essential Digital Badge can only be obtained if the owner has also obtained a Mastery Badges in Mean, Median, Mode, Probabilities, and Graphing. So it actually tells you right there that those are the only ways that that, that student can get this badge as they've already showed proficiency at a different level. Um, so that's how we actually call them levered badges. They're stackable badges, very much similar to your stackable certificates, and you can stack up a number of badges to show a much finer competency that's demanded in the workplace. Um, and so that's how we would actually show a graphic of that badge is that you have minor badges on the bottom and, and your expert badge on the top. Um, so the goals for this meeting today is to have a conversation because I am not an industry expert. I have no idea what I'm talking about except in general terms um, about Identifying employer industry desired competencies, not transparent in current courses, certificates, or degrees. Um, eventually, we'll define three to five competencies for a state system wide distribution, meaning that if we have one badge that's valued up there at Front Range, most likely it actually has a value down at uh, Pueblo or Pikes Peak or Red Rocks or even Lamar. And then also we need to decide, because this is such an emerging field, if we need one or two community-centered badges driven by your local workforce demands. That might be that there is an actual employer in Front Range up in Larimer County that actually needs a very specific 3D badge because they are doing medical 3D printing and they need a specific competency. And it's much, easy to, much easier to identify this student comes in with this badge I know they're a great fit for my, my business or this project I'm working on. And then we'll go on to decide an image for the badge. This actual work, I estimate, depending on how many competencies we come up with, should be no more than 10 hours of your time. Um, and, it will, and we can also um, break into groups if you feel like group work is okay. And then, uh, but it really should not be a significant load. It's, looking at your marketplace, looking at your businesses, and then interacting through Basecamp as to um, what you're seeing, the demand from your employers, and if we can translate that into a competency that is actually represented by a badge. I have talked a whole lot. Is there any questions out there? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, good. Um, 
When I was talking with Michelle, um, poor Michelle, Michelle always gets Brenda questions like early, early in the morning. Um, because I don't know um, engineering graphics or 3D printing or additive manufacturing. And additive manufacturing, um, since I have Red Rock, Pikes Peak, and Front Range, are any of your schools, colleges doing additive manufacturing, or is that only MSU? <clears throat> well, additive manufacturing may have a couple of different definitions, um, but I would definitely say our machining program at the Boulder County campus in Longmont probably does quite a bit of that on the manufacturing side. I mean, we do teach 3D printing at the Larimer campus in Fort Collins, and we do both additive and, and subtractive, but I, I can't say that it's um, completely manufacturing based because our CAD program is pretty diverse in its nature. It's not just manufacturing, it's architecture and design and, and um, engineering related. Which is fine. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome because I think we need to think outside of advanced manufacturing. Not, not that we're excluding advanced manufacturing, but we really need to get to tie into those um, where your students are actually going to go. Um, and if it is not only in advanced manufacturing, we need to open ourselves up to having these badges reflect other um, industries and sector partnerships. Um, so that's awesome. I'm glad that um, we have someone other that can actually give me direction other than um, MSU with their additive manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, well, go ahead. Well, I was also talking about Claudia, too, when we get into some more specifics. Ours aren't necessarily just manufacturing either. When I spoke to Brenda earlier, you know, they could be assembly models um, that's used in MGD, that's, as you said, architecture, any of that kind of thing. So that's why I wanted to get a little bit more broader range, just like you're suggesting. Mm hmm exactly. Okay, so at this point in time, let's go ahead and have a, a short conversation, and then we might actually have to break and then come back in in like two weeks and say, okay, what, I've investigated what where our students are actually being placed at or what our industry is demanding and then actually go on from there. But generally what I was thinking, for, um, feedback from MSU is talking about geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, that there are some students who can actually pass, pass through some of their courses and do okay in GD and T, but that employers are actually asking for that bump up level of GD and T um, so I was thinking if it's possible if we could actually um, consider uh, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing uh, badge probably at a proficiency level um, and then um, <clears throat> Michelle has actually talked about assembly of 3D models and um, Michelle you mentioned MGD. Can you give me what that is? I don't know what that is. No. That I was talking about GD and T earlier, but as okay. far as M MGD, um, that's really a, into multimedia graphics design. We have a lot of our um, MGD that wants to come down and use our, our 3D printing also. I mean, that's just another sense of what we do in 3D printing. It's not, not just manufacturing is what I was trying to get at this morning. Um, okay. The other thing is, um, you know, it, it takes a lot as far as, and I'm, I'm sure Claudia can attest to this, when we get into um, 3D printing, we do use that um, GD and T. We also use just tolerancing in general. Um, I don't know, uh, Rita, if, if you've run across that too, because, you know, certain materials have certain tolerances, and, and um, whether it's metals or it's, you know, 3D material. Um, so I, I, I like I, that. I don't know. We do 3D printing through our um, engineering graphics, but I'm right. not sure. They're focusing more on the engineering, and um, so I'm not sure. And Red Rocks are really focusing on um, our advanced manufacturing with, with putting an emphasis in certain career areas. So right now we're looking at electrical, um, meeting industry partners for electrical as well as our um, 
uh, decision machining is kind of two areas so that we could do welding as well. Rita, I can help with this. I'm looking at Delia's um, program uh, uh, catalog courses. And yeah. they don't do um, EGT 205. Our, our, um, GD and T, isn't that right? Is that EGT 205? That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, EGT 205 is over in our precision machining side. She states she really is very, very strict in her categories of SolidWorks, Revit, Intro to AutoCAD. Those are what really drive her program, it looks like. Now, she's got a couple EGT courses. Um, for her engineering graphics civil uh, for civil engineering I think certificate, but it's all CAD, CAD GIS, and then EGT survey drafting. Yeah, um, yeah. Our our engineering graphics is much more pre-engineering focused. So. So what I hear from this conversation is that maybe Red Rocks needs to actually special have a, two badges actually created for Red Rocks following their program. Does that make sense that, that because they might not be doing um, geometric dimensioning and tolerances or multimedia graphics and design or assembly of 3D models or printer materials, um, maybe that we need to actually think about Red Rocks actually having their own badges um, to recognize the importance in um, their program that's not necessarily, um, um, that's different than what's going on um, at Front Range or at Pike Peak. Does that make sense or did I get that wrong? No, it, it makes sense. I, you know, I, I think about how students pass through that program and often, you know, they do an accelerated program and often the students within one semester have, have are walking away with a certificate. So, and I'm getting the impression too that the certificate is too big, right? You're looking for something even smaller than that. You're looking for maybe and a unit based on, is it that could right? Be, it could be a unit or it could be, there, there are certain skill sets that we know that if an employer knows your student has, will hire right there on the spot. And it's making those skill sets visible, transparent to the employer rather than saying, okay, yeah, I have this certificate that says, I, you know, I have the um, certifi certified solid work certificate. But right. sometimes an employer says, well, I, Okay, I understand that you can work solid works, but I need this exact skill set on my floor right now. Like, how do you make that skill set um, transparent for that employer? And it might be several competencies that are in solid works, or it could be a competency that is not necessarily in solid works, but he needs that on his print floor when he's actually hiring somebody. Does that make sense? It does. I think what I'll need to do is just sit down with with the fac the lead faculty and and this is all new I mean this is all brand new to everybody oh absolutely so walk through this with her and see what she says um, because her program is really tight so I mean there there might be might be a way where we can look at that um, and see how she and, and then I, I can come back with her thoughts and comments um, about how this might might work for her. That totally um, makes sense, and I, di I wasn't expecting an answer today, definitely not, because this is such an emerging field, and we, it really, digital badges are definitely industry-driven, community-centered, and learner-focused, so if we keep that in our minds, it has to be driven by the industry. It can't be pushed out by us higher ed, because we can, we can print out as many monopoly digital badges as possible, but that doesn't mean they're going to hold any value inside your system, in your community. So we truly need to look at what the industry is and what the businesses surrounding your colleges need and make it more visible to them on what our learners are actually doing. So I have no problem with you guys talking about this outside of being around me. So I got a question though, Brenda. What, weren't these badges supposed to be something above any certificate that we might provide at our colleges or is that one step further that the students have a badge also? Um, not necessarily. The machining badges were dictated that way so that they okay, could... That's what happened in machining, yeah. Right. That's what was happened in machining because it was dictated to me that way is that the only way they could get a machining level one badge is if they passed the NIM certification, was, which was above and beyond their certificates and their courses. However, the way 
truly the way badges are supposed to work are they're at a granular level that is actually um, smaller than a course or certificate or degree and that smaller unit or item or competency or however you want to talk talk about it um, is what's valued by the industry it's highlighting some kind of experience that is going to differentiate that learner that applicant to that employer my biggest um, takeaway from this is okay this is aging me but back in 1980 I was studying for a geo petroleum engineering degree at UNM University of New Mexico Mount St. Helens erupted in May to uh, 1980 my geology professor quit everything and said I'm going up to work on the mountain I need 12 research assistants to follow me up there for 8 to 12 weeks so I tromped up an, all, all over that mountain. I gathered the best ash ever. I gathered pumice. I did site testing. I did surveying. I did everything. I was like, woohoo, this is so fun. This is awesome. Um, I came back in fall of 1980. My transcript only shows geology A. Doesn't talk about Mount St. Helens at all. It doesn't talk about my field work. Think about that. I had the same grade as the people years before me and the years after me, but I had the unique experience of working on the deadliest North American volcano in history, right? right? So that's uh -huh. something, that is, that is one experience that I have gotten that should be captured in a badge because it says something to an employer. You have active field work on a, on a volcano or you can do active uh, pumice and um, obsidian testing or you can do ash distribution rates all that kind of stuff but and that's what I'm looking for in the engineering badges is we know our employer we know we educate our students awesome but also we need to look at from an employer's view is had, had there been an employer out there searching for a geologist he would say geology needs knowledge of blah, 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 this, but maybe my field experience would actually be, you know, I need somebody who is exactly like that, who's actually done that kind of field work, right? Right. Well, that's kind of like um, combining, like we talked about too, 3D, uh, 3D printing models with robotics or electronics, you know, having them move, taking it that extra right. step. Okay. Right, exactly, exactly. So let's say you ha you one of your projects requires everyone to create a um, adult 3D puzzle, whether it's a Rubik's cube or one of those chain cubes or whatever like that. But what if a student actually not only does that, but he creates a little ball inside that that actually right. you can actually get out, right? That's mm -hmm. that. Not only did he go ab above and beyond, but he actually took the theory that you guys teach him and actually changed it and made a different application that he actually printed a 3D ball inside this Rubik's cube or this chain cube, right? Which right. takes an, a much higher level of skill. And that employer out there is like, I need somebody who can think like that. Okay. Okay. I, I, Hold on. Can you can you back up for just a second? So I'm going sure. back to your your um, example of being out on Mount St. Helens, and that was unique to you. So how me and the other create, twelve, right? How do me we and create, the other twelve? Yeah. How do we create a badge that I've got I've got an idea, but I mean, how do you create a badge that's so unique to your uh, school or to your you as an individual? I mean, or or the badges written broad enough that it's up to the instructor to decide, well, what you just did is really a badge. That, that's where I'm kind of getting stuck. I, right. I guess I'm, I'm really stuck in, I'm so stuck in the CCNS, you know, linear world. Right. And the, and right. And that's fine. And so what you first do is you actually figure out what is that unique quality and write a competency for it. The student will be able to X, 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 and X. The student will be able to design and develop a 3D model using metal extrusion, right? Um, and, then, and then you work it back saying, okay, to be able to prove that competency, what are the evidence? And the evidence will be either a project developed under the supervision of his instructor, a project developed under this with this kind of rubric, 
and then you decide on the evidence. You're not necessarily going to tell the instructor <clears throat> how a student can earn that badge, but you're going to say, okay, here's a competency, and here's the evidence the student actually needs to actually earn that badge. It's up to you, the instructor, to decide, you know, it works for me, and this is how I'm going to actually structure instruction to it, or I've already structured my instruction so that the student produces this to earn that badge. But what's most important is actually deciding on the competency. So you'd actually, inside the course, is there a competency of um, the student will be able to um, include articulated robotic movement inside a 3D printed object, which covers part of was it 362, Michelle, that they did that hand, that articulated hand? Yes. Okay. So uh, CAD 262 has very specific competencies, but you could even go to a granular level saying not only did they print the 3D graphic, but they also were able to do a robotic articulation of that 3D object. Okay, so I think I get it. So if you do a really nifty project in class that meets all the competencies that the generic competencies for that particular badge, you could earn that badge. The project could be Correct. anything, but as long as the project meets the written the, the, the written competencies, you're good to go. And produces right. the evidence or to support that. Right. Or proficiency. All right. All right. So it's very, very different than precision machining. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Precision machining was very prescriptive because I was given the direction is this is what you're going to do. Here is the NIMS badges. You figure out how to actually get the competencies for these NIM badges because we have the evidence that they're going to get. You describe that NIM badge, right? Whereas this is the groundswell up. We're actually saying, okay, employers are wanting this. This is what they can do in any of our 3D uh, CAD, 262 CAD. There's another advanced 3D uh, course, and I, 266, so out of 262 and 266, we might have 10 students who go, go above and beyond just the basics and can actually earn this badge. And so when they actually present this badge out in their portfolio in the world, they have dif differentiated themselves from the pack, right? Right. The A-plus student. Right. It could be an well, A-plus student, or it could be yeah. that one student who, yeah, they're getting C's in all their class, but they do this outside project that they have you evaluate that actually earns them that badge. That's not going to be the norm, but let's just pretend their uncle owns a machining shop or a 3D printing shop, and yeah, he, you know, he gets C's in your class, but there's this digital badge that's sitting out there in CAD 262 with these competencies. And he brings you a project that he's actually videotaped himself creating and actually bringing you the project in that actually meets the criteria and the evidence, then theoretically, he could probably earn that badge, right? So it's not connected with the college in any way? I, I don't... Well, he's obviously a student of your college. We're definitely not going to badge people out in the world, but I mean, he could be a C student in Michelle's CAD 262 course, right? Okay. But he's also he's also out there working in his, his uncle's 3D printing shop, and while he's okay. waiting for the machines, he designs something else and he brings it into her for evaluation. I don't okay. think that would happen often because I don't see a lot of self-motivated students to do this, but I mean it could happen. Because it really depends on the competencies and matching the evidence to the competencies. Okay. Claudia, does this make sense for you? Yeah, it does. Yeah. I, I, mean, okay. I do have students who would be excited about this. You know, the 3D printing is a big deal. Right now, um, I did go to Autodesk University. I heard you talking about it earlier um, back in November, December, and put together, put together one of the prosthetic hands in the um, Enable 
community uh, foundation area. I've been trying to get in touch with them because I'd like to bring that to FRCC, but um, I guess there's a, a more lengthy process. So I have some students right now looking at those prosthetic hands that are already online and seeing if we can um, we can make them better, um, but I've given them the challenge to start a design on a leg. So those are my advanced students, and I could see where something like this would um, fit right in. You know, we're also doing some fun things with 3D scanning, so that might be another another place. But um, you know, we might have some other classes under the CAD program that are. Um, where we can get specific skills. I, I could see a couple of them that um, might be badge worthy, if that's how you want to put it. That's an awesome way to put it. Um, okay, so do we have any other questions out there? I think we've done a whole lot of work for um, the time we've had right now. So I would like to reschedule another, um, let you guys go out and think about it, let you guys look at your programs, and then um, come back in, do you want to come back in like three weeks or two weeks and actually say, you know, in my program at Front Range, I'm looking at these five areas and of these five areas, these badge worthy kinds of competencies and then present it to the group or actually post it up on Basecamp and then that way he can say, you know, I was thinking along those lines, but I'm, I, I might need to tweak this a little bit for my college. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes, yeah, that makes a lot. How about you, Pam? Is that okay with you? Yeah, we're just fine. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and schedule a uh, return. Is this time, well, obviously 10 o'clock is bad for Claudia because she just gets out of course and has to run. So could we actually go um, do March 7th at 1030? Will that work for everybody? Yeah, that works for me. That works for me too. Works for me. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll come back um, on March 7th at 10.30. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and post to Basecamp, our engineering graphics Basecamp. The direction that we're gonna go is that we're all gonna go out and look at our programs, whether they're advanced manufacturing or not, and try to identify those granular competencies that, um, that our workforce is actually wanting. And if you, and go ahead and start contributing your ideas to the base camp threads, and that way we can start refining that before we come back in two weeks. Sounds great. All right, thanks a lot everybody for, for joining us today. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you. Thanks, Brenda. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Bye.